outside, but if it's not on the inside, it cannot be released on the outside. Your internal reality will always create your external reality. Put this up, Deontay. So when you live in fear and anxiety, you contribute to your own conflict. That's true. Yeah. That's why the devil tries to woo you out of the place of rest. Yeah. Because when he can woo you out of that place of rest, you begin to uh, live in fear instead of living in faith. You're living in fear. You live in anxiety. That's true. And you contribute to your own conflict that's coming against you. It's not that you cause your own conflict. The enemy comes against you. He wounds you out of that place of rest. And then you're living out of worry and anxiety. And that's you true. contribute. That's true. Come on. But God says, you don't have to live there. You can live over here in my place of rest. Yeah. And then when you work, you're working out of a place of rest. Let me show you this, what I found in the natural. Now, some of you are going to know this kind of terminology a lot more than me. So I had to, I had to write this down. First of all, I put up Hebrews 4.11. Let me show you this. Sometimes the place of rest has to be fought for. And I know, yes, I know that sounds true. like it's an oxymoron, but it's not. No, it's true. Because the devil tries to woo you out of that place, so you have to fight to be in that place That's of rest. Right. Look what Hebrews 4.11 says. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that That's right. rest. That means if you are diligent, that means you press on. If something's pressing against you, you say, I don't care. Yes. I am God to get to this place of rest because yes. I can't do my ministry. Yes. I can't do my marriage. I can't raise my kids. I can't go to work as long as I'm here and living in this anxiety, fear, yes. worry, stress. I've got to get to this place of rest. Yes. And then whatever I do on the inside is going to affect my outside. Amen. Now look what happens in the natural. This is very interesting. Bear with me as I read this. A strange thing happens naturally in our bodies that God created to happen to help us perform. In, our, in a crisis situation, such as like a war, such as if you are a police officer and something happens and they have to perform at a higher level, such as maybe a fire department, something happens and they have to perform at a higher level. Something happens naturally in our bodies that God created in our digestive system in, in, in case or that it begins to shut down. And what happens is... I'm going to try to pronounce these words right. The pituitary gland releases hormones that triggers cortisol to go into the stomach and it causes adrenaline rush through the body. And it gives us incredible focus, it gives us incredible strength, and a whole bunch of other things begin to trigger throughout the body. That's why when certain things happen, all of a sudden, have, has anybody ever had something bad to them happen? And you're just like, no, all of a sudden, you're just not hungry. You was hungry 10 minutes ago, you found out bad news, oh, I'm right. not hungry no more. Yeah. Let this click into your spirit. This is what happens naturally in order, God created this to happen, in order for the body to perform. A lot of different things happen. If you talk to soldiers who are in war, and that, that adrenaline rush begins to kick in, and that digestive system begins to shut down, they, they may have had to go to the bathroom two seconds ago, and all of a sudden, they ain't got to go no more, because they're at a higher level, ready to focus. They have strength and to perform. But here's what happens. God has, God has caused this to happen, to release, so we can be on edge to perform at the best of our ability at that particular time and moment. And it is a positive thing that happens. God has fixed it that way in order for us to perform at a certain level. But here's what happens. The problem is people who live in and under stress or under anxiety or under fear or in other words outside of the place of rest that God has created for them when we live in that place that which is made to enable us to perform at an ultimate level now determines or undermines your ability to perform at all in other words God created this trigger system to happen to get you to perform and be focused and strength at a higher level but when we walk and live in fear and stress and anxiety and in unbelief that that trigger what it was meant to help us perform at a higher level now begins to undermine us to be able to perform at all mm -hmm. come on that's good. Hold on. that's 
good. Amen. How does it undermine us when that trigger is kicked in? You get ulcers. Yeah. Because how many knows if you're living in worry, yeah, anxiousness, true. fear, unbelief, anxiety, that gut will start churning, acid goes in, and all of a sudden you're just like, oh, give me some milk. Ulcers begin to form. Your autoimmune system begins to get attacked. <clears throat> Joints begin to ache. Muscles are always like this, and so they begin to ache. Right. And all these, all these things in our body begin to shut down because of the constant flow of stress. Right. Instead of it being alarmed to have our body to be able to function at its highest level, it's a, the continual flow that breaks down the immune system and makes us vulnerable to all kinds of diseases. And what's going on internally affects your external reality. That's good. Why is it so important to live in the place of promise, which is a place of rest? How many broken down Christians do we see wandering around? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And I had to check myself. Bones aching, joints aching, ulcers, disease attacking of every kind. Yeah. Why does all that happen? Because we constantly live in a place of stress, anxiety, and God never meant, that's why Jesus wasn't afraid in the boat. Amen. Why were the disciples afraid in the boat? Because you know they're... Right. They grabbed a bucket and they was doing all these kind of, come on. Right. Their muscles were sore. Their minds were frantic. Right. And Jesus, he's just laying there. i got to get some rest because I'm about to face the demons on the other side. That's good. And he was able to get up in the storm and say, peace be still. Because yes. peace was in him. Yes. yes. Peace. Amen. He could say, he could say, I bring on you the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And it wasn't long after that. The books of Acts came down and they received the Holy Ghost. How do you think Peter's shadow healed people? Peter's shadow healed people because he was overshadowed by somebody greater right. than who he was. Right, that's good. It wasn't just the effect of Peter's shadow. Right. It was his inner that affected his outer. Amen. Let me, let me move this along. Turn with me to Luke. I'm going to show you two more scriptures. In Luke 17 and Ephesians 3, I mean, and then we'll 